Hi friends, today I'm going to create yet another music themed card that can also be used as a holiday card. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the process. To create the shape of the card, I'm going to need a 5x7 card base out of light gray cardstock. I will also be using a frame that I've die cut out of white cardstock. It's the same size, 5x7 inches. You can also create the similar frame using just your paper trimmer. To create my musical background, I'm going to use some dies from my Brass Instrument set by Paper Discovery. I've die cut all the shapes out of plain white cardstock and now I'm going to place uh, the frame onto the card without sticking it down and I'm simply playing around trying to fill in as uh, much space as possible. Once I'm happy with the placement of the shapes, I'm going to stick them down right onto the card base. I'm lifting up the instruments one by one, applying some liquid glue at the wrong side, and then I'm placing them back. And as always, the tools and supplies that I'm using are listed down below in the description, as well as on my blog. I keep attaching the die cuts until I have filled the entire background. Those are nice large images, so it won't take long. And this is what the finished background looks like. It is almost tone on tone and it has a lot of texture as well. The next step is creating a shaker frame. So I'm applying some double-sided tape at the wrong side of the frame die cut and then I'm going to attach a piece of acetate to it. I have also applied a double layer of foam tape at the wrong side and now I'm going to fill in the shaker. Since my shaker window is quite large, it's the size of the card, I can add some larger element, not just some tiny sequins. So I've used the musical swirl dies from the grand piano die set and I'm simply clipping off um, all the elements that I don't need. I'm only going to leave the treble clefs and the notes. Oftentimes when we think shake a card we automatically reach for the sequence but we forget that um, shaker cards can be filled with pretty much anything. So now I've die cut three treble clefs as well as a bunch of notes out of black cardstock and I'm placing them right onto the card front. I'm also going to add more smaller sequins just to fill in the space and uh, add some shine and sparkle. I'm keeping all the elements closer to the center of the card so that they won't stick to the tape. Then I'm peeling off the liner and positioning the frame straight onto the card base, lining up all the corners and edges. At this point, it seems that a couple of die cuts did get under the tape, but I figured out a trick how to fix it and I'd like to share it with you. You are going to need an awl, a sewing needle or a poke tool. I have to stick it between the foam tape and the cardstock and this way I can penetrate inside the shaker card with the needle. This way you can move your sequence or die cuts or whatever you have inside with the needle and then you can uh, stick it out in, and uh, it won't leave any traces. All there is left to do now is to attach the focal image. I have chosen this uh, trumpet player from the orchestra die set. I've die cut the image out of black cardstock three times and now I'm using the liquid glue to stick all three images one on top of another to achieve more dimension. This way the die cut looks very similar to chipboard. And now I'm going to adhere this image right onto the acetate. Again, I'm using the liquid glue. 
I'm just making sure that his feet are touching the frame at the bottom and this way he won't be floating in the air. And this is what the finished project looks like. It has lots of texture, lots of movement, but still it is flat enough to be sent in an envelope. I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. The next one is coming out tomorrow and I hope to see you back then. Bye-bye!